the question for the Kings, because you say they're going to get better. Well, of course they should get better on paper because DJ Hogue hasn't even played a single minute yet. And this was a guy that was awesome for the Cairns Taipans last year. Uh, firstly, before we dive into the rotation stuff, because this is going to be fascinating to watch, any idea where he is at for Sydney Kings fans? DJ Hogue? Yes. Uh, my feel is it's still a couple of weeks away. Okay. So I'd put it at one to two weeks away, something like that. Still has to go through some of the processes, but not a month away. But it wouldn't surprise me if, He's there not next week, but the week after. So one of the positives that we floated as an idea a couple of weeks ago on this podcast, when talking about the Kings, and I think that there was an idea that they might have some things to figure out. What does Denzel Valentine look like in this league? What shape is Jalen Adams in? Because he didn't play a lot of basketball last season. Alex Tui's the next star. Jonah Bolden hasn't played basketball for years. So we thought maybe it was going to take some time. But when we discuss the idea of DJ Hogue being out for a month, we're trying to be glass half full here. And we mm -hmm. said, well, maybe the positive is Jonah Bolden immediately getting big <laughs> minutes. Now, he's playing around 18 minutes per game. He's getting you around eight points, six, seven rebounds. Obviously, he had a couple of big games on the weekend, a massive game on the glass. Mm. I don't think there's any possible way that you could have predicted that he was going to be this good this quickly. No. Again, the numbers are so noisy, but out of... All the players to have played a minimum of 50 possessions so far this season, which is a tiny sample size. He ranks second out of the 76 players in that category for uh, net rating, which means that the Sydney Kings, with Jonah Bolton, it's not an individual stat, but mm. with Jonah Bolton on the floor, the Sydney Kings are outscoring teams uh, by 21 points per 100. It, basically, when he's been on the floor and some of these bench players, Kwatnoi, another one that is incredibly mm. high in that category, they're playing winning basketball. And I think it's because he does a lot of the little things. He's not out there getting 20 points and 10 rebounds a night. He hits the offensive glass at a really high rate and he can knock down the outside shot. So he's good for the spacing as well. Mm. I couldn't have predicted he would look this good this quickly. Now, maybe you should sit back and say, well, this is an NBA guy. It's not a surprise. He's clearly stayed in shape, but he's been unbelievable and you feel like there's upside. I don't know. If the Kings didn't think this no. either. I think they were hoping to get to the midway point in the season. Yeah. And he would have found his feet by then. We're five games in and he's looking like he, he could start on a bunch of teams right now. And like, obviously so. Um, like you said, his ability to knock down the three does a lot for this team. A lot of what the Sydney Kings do offensively goes through their bigs. So it goes through Geordie Hunter and through Jonah Bolden. And with Bolden's ability to pass the ball, they, they just create so many good, like high quality looks. And so that's important there. Um, and then the fact that he... Is just he's backing up Geordie Hunter, who is playing really well in his own right awesome. too, right? So like Geordie Hunter's been great, Jonah Bolden's been great. The absence of Hogue means that we've been able to see Alex Tui get an increased opportunity, and his production's good. He's <laughs> shooting the ball really well, like he's looking like a like a real damn real player, yeah, right. And so this team is just stacked, and we knew that their bench was good, right? We we know their bench is a known commodity at this point with uh, weirdly enough the worst player this season so far has probably been like sean bruce he just hasn't found his groove yet but we know what sean bruce can do he will and so <laughs> yeah um and so once sean bruce gets going like they're getting and angus glover too again we know what he can do he just hasn't found his groove completely yet but we can see him slowly finding it once those two do start clicking you know quite noise is playing the best basketball of his career alex Tui is looking like a real player jalen galloway is looking like the most improved player in the league um, and I, I also point to Denzel Valentine, who hmm. I had some questions about early on, just because I think they were playing him out of position and out of the role that is, it sort of suits him. But the way he's been playing, the way he's been shooting the ball, um, and just his, like, his willingness to shoot it, but his, his ability to be a connector, I really like him as a third input. And so once Hogue comes back in the lineup, then I think Denzel Valentine can just slip into the role that I think this team wanted for him initially which is just to space the hell out of the floor and be a connector. And all of a sudden, you have this team that is just super balanced and unbelievably deep. If they can guard at a high level, which they're, they're defending decently well. Um, and they're that team that I think is going to challenge Tasmania as being the best offense. I think they'll end up surpassing them at some point. Like They have all the pieces and the depth to be the best team in the league. And it, just, it seems like they're farther along than we thought they were. Jalen Adams, 20 points, 
six assists per game when he won the MVP. He's at 20 and five right now. And again, you think that he's going to get better. Uh, with Valentine, the thing that you, you mentioned his shooting, which has been, I mean, he's a guy that right now you, you don't want to leave. He's only at 38%, but he's shooting at a high volume. So he's always asking questions of the defense. Yeah. But he's leading the team in assists. He's getting 5.4 assists. And this is a guy that's played so many games in the NBA. Mm. I know he's played overseas a little bit, so he's experienced this. But he's come into this league and he's never trying to do too much. Like his willingness to pass the ball and move the ball is, he, he deserves so much respect for that. Uh, yeah. The way he's playing has been outstanding. So here's the question I've got for Sydney. Nine players right now averaging 15 minutes per game. And they're all guys, aside from Tui, who's obviously new to the system, and Galloway, who has been around uh, this club though. They're all guys that have played in major moments before and have every right to put their hand up and say, I should be playing on this team. And I probably should be playing in the fourth quarter big minutes because I've had big moments across the course of my career. So DJ Hoke comes in, who's impacted the most. And maybe the, maybe they spread the load, but typically in these situations, there's going to be one guy that takes the biggest hit. I mean, like off the bat, it'd be Tui. Okay. Um, just because Tui right now theoretically starts at the four. I, I imagine Hoke comes in, starts at the four, so Tui is benched. Um I still think they'll be able to sort of grab minutes from a bit of everybody and make sure that Tui still gets his run because he deserves to have, he deserves to be out there, right? His ability to stretch the floor, defend multiple positions. Yep. Like we, his output is, is obvious. Like we, we know what he's done out there. Um, yeah, but pro- probably him, maybe quite to an extent. Um, but I, I think the, the strength of this team is their positional versatility mm-hmm. in that. Sure. Like you may, it's not just about DJ Hogue coming back in and he just starts, he's just at the four and takes all of those four man minutes. No, th- there's going to be times where DJ Hogue plays a five and there's going to be times where Alex two is on and he plays the three and Galloway plays the two. And like these guys can just chop and change basically, basically from like two to five on this team, you can just almost chuck anyone in there and just see how it works. Right. And I, I just think that's how, Abdel Fattah likes to play, just get rebounds, heat on the rim, just push it as fast as you can. Um, I, I it, It's going to affect just the minutes, like the volume of minutes across the board with some people. Um, but as far as like how the team functions, and I, I think functionally these guys are just going to get a similar level of, of opportunity. So whether it's just one guy or they do try and share the load, I mean, going to a 10-man rotation can be a little more uh, challenging there as well. So we'll see what happens, but... Jeez, Alex Dewey, if you would have said you're going to get to the time where DJ Hogue comes back in and you're asking yourself, do we really <laughs> want to take Alex Dewey out of the rotation? He's been so impactful. It's a it's a pretty cool uh, question to be asking yourself, so I'm sure, if you're the Sydney Kings coaching staff. Just quickly, on the roll, uh, offensively. So last year, uh, DJ Hogue with the Cairns Taipans, 87% of his shot attempts were either at the rim or at three. Around 50% of his shots came from three. This year, Alex Tui is basically identical. 88% of his shots are at the rim or three. So in terms of shot profile, it's almost like for like, even though you would say based on what we saw last year, Hogue may have an enhanced reputation in the NBL. I think because of the shots that these two guys take, they're going to be similar. I think it's almost uh, a, a pretty nice fit to just slot straight in and you, you don't really have to change too much. No, again, functionally, the team doesn't have to change too much. The, the only thing is you... Like you, you're going to want to continue to get two of his minutes. Um, again, not just because he's helping you now, but because his potential is vast. And so you give him, you continue to give him opportunities. Come the middle of the season, he could be up. He could be amazing. Yeah. So you want to continue to feed him those minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm intrigued. And the Kings, like we said about Jonah, and we should probably said about Tui too. I don't know if they thought they'd be five games in and thinking that 19-year-old next star Alex Tui is hmm. going to be like one of our key rotation guys while we're winning and that Jonah Bolden would be dropping double-doubles while we're winning. I don't know if they thought they'd be at this point. 